giving yourself a little grace on the days where you don't have it. Because just like training is cumulative, so is mental toughness. <laughs> mm-hmm. So It's all about the grit and the grace. Grit and grace. <laughs> grit and grace. <laughs> You've got it. Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We are here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. Hey everyone, it's Amy. Today, Angela and I explore mental toughness, what it means, how you find it, and what happens when you lose it. Lots of good stories in this one, as well as a couple of books on grit and resilience that Angela and I use and love. We hope this podcast helps you find that balance between grit and grace, which is a goal both of us always strive for. Have a listen. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Angela and I are here with another awesome podcast. Are we on, is this six or seven? I can't keep track. (laughs) I don't know. But it's I a know. number. It's, it's a, a good number. number. I know. <laughs> so um, today I was so I was sitting in the parking lot at the Y today, getting ready to go in for a swim, and I remember like a few weeks ago I was asking you as a professional because you do this for your job, and I was like asking I was like how do you do this every day <laughs> and like train all these hours and find it in you to train when you know when you're tired and you were so funny you were like well sometimes I just sit in the parking lot of the Y for a while (laughs) until I'm ready to go in (laughs) to like I feel like going in and I was like well that makes sense I was so I was sitting in the parking lot and I was like Amy just go in and swim uh but so that got me thinking about you know just grit and mental toughness and we talked about, you know, moving forward. And one of the things that I think separates the people who are really great at what they do and for us at our sport is mental toughness and grit. And so Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to focus on that today. And I wanted to, the first thing I just wanted to ask is where do you think your mental toughness comes from and how do you find that? Um, well, I think most athletes have an, in, I mean, anyone that competes has some type of, you know, desire to see what they're made of. Um, I mean, some are very competitive versus not so competitive. But in terms of myself, I think I, at a very young age, you know, I used to make games going around my um, house with my neighbors on, <laughs> on like, who, who, who could run around the house the fastest or... You know, we would make all these little, um, like, climb climb the monkey bars, go down the swings, like, crawl through this, crawl through that, run around the house, and we would just make games, a ton of games. And um, I think the competitiveness is something that's maybe um, something you kind of grow up with. Um, I actually had this conversation with my mom because she is not competitive at all. But I'm like, no way, you are competitive. I think... I think everyone is is competitive in some sense, and things are toned down for some people because of fear. Um, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of, you know, the what if. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I come from a very um, competitive driven side, so <laughs> I just assume that like everyone has that, you know, kind of internally. and it gets solidified as you grow. Um, You know, I would go into some running events and um, have some success and, you know, play a bunch of games like that in sports and everything. And, you know, I really like to win. (laughs) I mean, it felt great, you know, to cross the line first. And so I'm not really sure where it comes from, but uh, when I was with Red Bull, we went to a camp and we had to sit down with a psychologist and it was so awesome. Because we did, I don't know how many tests. He probably had about 20 tests that we had to take. And one of them was trying to decipher, like, in terms of the athletes like that, that were there. There was, like, snowboarders, um, high divers, um, skiers, you know, myself. There was another triathlete. There was a cyclist. All sorts of different 
sports. And what it came down to is what, what we all had in common was this really high term of grit. Mm-hmm. And grit is like the perseverance to see what you can do, you know, the ability to really push it all to the max. And um, we all kind of had this, I don't know how the tests were, but it was this grit factor, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, so maybe in that sense, some people have more grit versus others. Um, and maybe that's what defines the differences between the two um, of someone who, you know, really wants to try to win and not so much. But there's so much in play on the mental side of sport. I think, you know, there's been races where I've been 100% all in and then other races I've let fear or doubt or worry kind of consume me and you know, my mental capa- um, c- capacity to really do well at that race just dwindled. So I, I think like anything, swim, bike, run, nutrition, uh, recovery, mental side of things is something that people need to be really, really aware of. And some probably have to work on it quite a bit. When it's race day or when you're lining up you know, at the swim start or on, at the bike start of a gravel race, how do you balance your competitive side um, without letting that derail you? You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you're so competitive and this goes with the mental toughness within a race, when things don't go your way, you know, some very competitive people will tend to just throw in the towel because they're not going to win. Right. So yeah. how how do you balance that? Because I know that I am competitive with myself, but I'm like I was not one of those people who always wanted to like play games and let's let's make this a race and let's see who wins. But people think mm-hmm. I'm very competitive, but I, I'm very competitive with myself. So but for you, you know, you grew up, you are you're a very competitive person. I can attest to this because if you play a board game with Angela <laughs> Um, she does want to win in a very friendly Canadian way, but she's very, very competitive, but, but she won't let you think that. But anyway, so how do you balance that in a race? Yeah, I, I I think one thing to discuss is task versus ego oriented outcomes. Mm -hmm. So the ego, you know, obviously we all have an ego, um, and sometimes it's, it's, it, it, takes over things and you know we, we can be perfectionists um we want to win all the time um but what happens is that is that it's based on the outcome and so if you don't win your ego is hit pretty pretty hard and so you have to kind of look at a race as more of a task and task is a more permanent thing like regarding a skill to something so you're actually f- focusing on the task or the performance that you're about to do. So you're focusing on a solid swim start or, you know, um, maintaining 200 watts or whatever on the bike. So it's kind of focusing on an inward outcome versus an outward outcome. So something that you have more control over is, is more of a task oriented approach. And when you focus on that stuff, when you're coming to races, it just lets go of the stress and you know we all maybe not all of us but we all want to get out on that start line and do our best I mean I mean that's why we do sport it's to to challenge ourselves and see what we're made of um but we choose to play this game we choose to play triathlon and so we don't have to win but we want to win but it shouldn't have to impact your self-worth at all so if you have that type of approach or come back to that then the, the idea of wanting to win is just a game. Like it's a, it's a I get on this start line, I'm going to see what I got and let's see what happens. Um, you know, it's taken me a long time and there's, and there's races where I do revert back to like this ego-oriented approach or thinking and, and it's hard sometimes, especially if I haven't raced for a long time. I think, oh my gosh, you know, I have all these, ex- these expectations of myself. I don't know how I'm going to do. But then if I just like calm myself down and say, why am I here? I'm here to see what I got right now. Like no matter what happened in the past, um, if I lost or won or, you know, had a bad race, a good race or what have you, it doesn't matter. I mean, none of that matters. It's just like what I can do on this present time frame and moment. And so for me to win in, 
in that sense is just to go all in at that point, to go all into what I have at the moment. And so I just try uh, to let it all go. And um, it's funny, when I worked with Mark Allen, he, uh, he actually brought this approach to me. He, we had an interview once that he brought up and he's like, what do you think of when you're racing? And I said, I don't really think about anything. I said, the best races I've ever had is when I just don't think, you know, and just let things flow. And I guess that's what you could call the zone or, or what have you. But it's, it's when things are just, you know, you're just in the moment and you're not having to stress over this, this chitter chatter in the background of your own thoughts um, and just enjoying the process. And so those races, when I look back on some of my races, those were the best times I've ever had and the best races I've had. Like the outcomes, no matter if I was 10th place or first place, you know, it, it, those are very proud moments for me because I enjoyed myself. I pushed myself to the limit and, um, I mean, I had fun. It was, it was key. Can you think about where you felt like mentally, like you had your mentally your best race, like you said, even if you weren't 10th or first and where you had your worst race mentally, can you think, I mean, not necessarily, it's possible that your placement, like if you won a race, that probably was one of your best races mentally, but I'm thinking about where you really did feel successful in your mental and your toughness and your grit versus your well, one where you kind of tanked. Yeah, my my most proudest race was Kona in 2018, and I had no no thought process of where I would end up. I just wanted to finish the race. <laughs> I was so excited, and so I guess when I went into that race with a lot of gratitude of having my health back mm -hmm. and being able to see what I got, and that's really the only things I focused on. I didn't know if I was going to be able to even finish the marathon. And the whole time, I, I, I honestly, the entire race, and I, I, it's amazing looking back at it now, is I use the word be strong. For some reason, it just stuck in my head. And it, I literally repeated it over and over and over again and just kept myself in the present moment and took a few chances on the bike. Um, but it was all just like internal. It, it, it had nothing to do with who I was around or what was happening. It was just like something inside me. I just like, I listened to myself, you know? And I ended up coming eighth place. And I mean, that's just, it was uncalled for. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was honestly, like, how the hell did I do that? Um, just from the lead up, you know, I did like six or seven Ironmans leading up trying to get in. And um, I mean, I was fit, but I, to come eighth was, it was, it was a very mental shift for that race. And it was, it started from the beginning. Um, I have this picture of myself. And I'm kind of like all swollen because I'm like pre-carbed up and like salt. <laughs> and I'm just, but the but 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 the mental picture of me, and I have this picture, and I look at it sometimes. It's it's just this sense of calm. It's mm -hmm. this sense of like, I am just so grateful that I get to do this, you yeah. know. And it it just changed perspective. So it was it was good. Um, a race where it was really bad. <laughs> I mean, I've had a few of those, definitely. Um, I think some of them were when I was trying to deal with Lyme and I didn't know, I mean, I just couldn't finish and it mm -hmm. was just mentally hard. But if I had to look way back, um, it was a race where my dad, he was the first time he actually saw me race and mm -hmm. I had no position to be in this like um, ITU style race because oh, I'm wow. not a swimmer and I came dead last out of the water and um, I couldn't see anyone and it was a looped course on the bike like three loops and apparently every time I'd come around the corner the the gals were like right there but but I but I just would not see them at all because they would turn the corner they would turn the corner mm -hmm. so after like the second lap I pulled out and I was just devastated because I just thought I was so bad Mm -hmm. And that was just all ego, you know. I wanted to prove to my dad that I could race and, um, you know, there was a lot of stress around that and um, I was also really young. I mean, that was probably one of my f fifth races or something, trying to, <laughs> trying to see what I got. But, you know, those things stick with you and uh, it's a process to kind of build through it. So, but how about you? I mean, you've done a number of races now. 
I have. So one of the things for me, I'm pretty proud of my mental toughness within a race. Uh, I am not proud of my mental toughness before a race, but I always say that I do, I know, which I'll talk about. I always say I do race with an attitude of gratitude, always. And I smile a lot on the race course, which I think helps you. When it gets hard, I smile. And I just think the act of smiling, I think there's research that says if you smile, Mm -hmm. it actually changes like your brain chemistry. So I I will do that even when I don't want to smile. But, um, you know, everybody thinks like, oh, my God, you're like, oh, you're such a badass. Like, you're so tough. But there are moments when you're, I'm not. Um, And, you know, one memory for me that stands out was this past year's uh, 70.3 Worlds in St. George, Utah. And anybody who's in my age group, which is the 45 to 49 year old women who was there, knows that we went dead last. We were supposed to race on a different day. And they combined days and the pros went off at 7 a.m. followed by them all the men and all of the women. And so we were the last age group and we were getting in the water at 9.50. So almost three hours after the race began. Um, In Mm -hmm. fact, while I was in the water, (laughs) Gustav Eden won. (laughs) That's how how (laughs) far, which I didn't know, of course, until the end of the race. But that's how far, I mean, he's fast, obviously, but that's how far like back we started. So Mm -hmm. we went into that race knowing it was going to be very hot and then the weather shifted and that day we were supposed to get some very strong storms. And so, you know, they were going to hit at some point midday and we were in the swim line and we could see the storm clouds coming and we were not in wetsuits because the water temp was 80 degrees. So it was a non-wetsuit legal swim for everybody. Um, which for me puts a little fear into me because I'm used to swimming in a wetsuit, especially in a race, and it wasn't salt water, blah, blah, blah. So we get in, and I'm actually doing okay in the swim. I'm just kind of cruising, nothing crazy. And um, I turn the second buoy, and it starts to rain, which I really was. I was just like, okay, it's raining. That's fine. I have swim in the rain. And within 30 seconds, it went from rain to what is happening? I can't swim. And the wind was blowing straight at us from the shore at like 30, 40 miles an hour. There was just some freak storm. And I have, I wish, I wish I could say that I was so tough and I was like, I'm going to get through this. And, you know, I'm so strong and I will find a way to get to that shore. And there was a little part of me that was thinking that because I was thinking there's no way I'm DNFing like 20 minutes into this race after I came all the way to Utah. But I was extremely scared. I was treading water really fast. A lot of my like survival skills went out the window, (laughs) like, you know, the whole float on your back or relax, you know, I'm not in a wetsuit. I was holding on to the, um, one of the boats, a rope, I was holding onto a rope. And at that point, There wasn't a lot of communication, so nobody could tell us what was happening because we didn't, none of us wanted to quit, but we didn't, we didn't know. It was just too dangerous to swim. It was this crazy storm. And the woman, I'll never forget the woman on the boat. I was holding onto the rope and she looks at me. She goes, either get in the boat or let go and swim. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, okay, I'll swim. And there was a kayak guy next to me and he was so nice. I said, do you know what's happening? He said, no. I said, if I swim, will you stay next to me? And he's like, I'll be right here. And then I said, where's the buoy? And he's like, there's a boat blocking it. So boats were all over all, you know. um, Anyway, so I have never been so scared in the water in a race. And it turns out that they eventually pulled us all because it was so dangerous. And we got on the boat. There's this woman next to me was hysterically crying. And we finally got to shore and they let us continue because they pulled us. We didn't ourselves you know we ran up into the tent the um barriers are like blown over because of the storm and I'm shaking and freezing and they have space blankets on and I'm in transition for like 10 minutes and they're like you need to go like keep you keep going and so you at that point you just have to like 
I just had to pull myself together and just be like, okay, I'm going to get on this bike and I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and, you know, you went, I went from being very, very scared and really feeling like I was going to drown in the water because it was so bad to having to recollect myself and get back on the bike and race, race a very hard course when it's still wet, it's still raining. You know, looking back, I was really, really proud of myself. The way I pulled myself together, I was like, all right, you've got to eat and you've got to drink and you've got to get <laughs> back in it. But, you know, when we talk about mental toughness and grit and resilience, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's not there. Like, I wish, I really wish, look, I could have been like, I've got this. But I was like, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to die in this water, <laughs> you know? I mean, obviously not, but it was it was pretty scary. Even like right now, recounting this story, like my heart rate mm -hmm. is going. So so let me just stop you for just a second. So, so what made you decide to get on the bike and keep going? Like, was it the determination to not let s some external force stop you? Or, because you're obviously quite scared and in a, in a panic kind of anxious mode. So how did so how were you able to transfer that? I didn't want a DNF. I'm not a quitter. That's definitely I definitely okay. I'd like to finish what I start. And then the women in the tent, the people the volunteers were like, "Let's get you going." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> but um I definitely got on that bike and I was I was cold and stuff mm -hmm. and it it took me good 10 15 minutes to just settle down. Um I knew I just knew I didn't want to quit. Okay, so can I stop you right there? Just because mm -hmm. I'm really curious. Yeah. So you were asking me at the beginning of this podcast, like where my mental yeah. side of things come from. Yeah. And I said everyone has it. So you don't want to quit. Where does that come from? Like where, because like some people have, have an easy, ah, you know, whatever. It didn't work out. I'll stop. Yeah. But you you never quit what you start. And so where do where did that come from and why that? Because I, I, I have started races where I've quit, but... You know, it was more for health reasons than anything. But, I mean, I, I obviously have that attitude as well. But I'm just curious where you think that came from. I'm super stubborn and I'm very, <laughs> very hard on myself. <laughs> so I feel like quitting isn't an option if you can just keep going. We talk a lot about keep moving forward. Um, yeah. And I will keep trying until it's not possible. Now, of course, had I hurt myself, I, I'm not dumb. I'll, I'll listen. I don't know where that comes from because I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like maybe I used to be a quitter. Maybe not. Um, but I really, really like to put my heart into something. So that reminds me of Boston last year when uh, I had, you talked about your kind of mantra. One of your biggest mantras is be strong, which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. Um, and I have a lot of different mantras. But at Boston... I hit a wall pretty hard <laughs> uh, right when everybody else hits the wall you know you get to the hills and all that and my quads were just on fire and I was like I'm just gonna keep going and that what I said to myself on repeat for a good three miles was Amy can you endure this and the answer was yes and mm. I was like then just keep going and I just said it over and over can you endure this yes keep going and so that got me through and I think about that sometimes I mean I have other mantras and things like that you know when we think about mental toughness and it's grit and it's the ability like you said to just see something through mm -hmm. but on the other side on the flip side I am also very I'm very okay with not succeeding which sounds really it sounds like um like I, I don't know two sides of a coin or something because when I don't have a good race I don't really beat myself up because I know I did my best and I think when it comes down to it like you said when you really just give your all mm -hmm. and when you give whatever you have on that day then whatever place you've come in or however you did it you should be happy with when you've put the work in, you know, and so that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think like along those lines as well is, you know, it really does come down to an internal drive. Like you have to have this internal drive of what, like, what, 
why you race in the first place, you know? And mm-hmm. for me, it's, it's, you know, I've said this in a few podcasts and things and stuff, but I love competing because it's a way to bring all sides of me together, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. It's, it's, it's the one thing that I found in life that really challenges me in all those areas because you really are, you're, putting yourself out there and it's it's just honestly seeing what you've got and um some of my best races you know I recall are are where you know my challenges within myself and it may sound cliche that you know the race is for yourself but it but it really is you know because you have no control over who who even starts the race uh the conditions of the race um where you are um, coming out of the water like you can only control what you can do you know and and part of that is 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 having having an outlook in terms of what your plan is f- for the race I, I, um i always like to go into races with some type of plan of action so some type of task oriented approach so for swimming you know my goal is you know to find a rhythm um uh try to you know focus on the front part of my stroke like i i pick out certain things within each sport to, to focus on that way i'm not really looking at outcome or anything like that cuz i know if i can focus on the task at hand that'll take me to the next step so the so the way that you approach each part of the race or or all of the race c- can come into play but you know i look back at um um, unbound, which was like 212 mile bike ride. It was insane. That's <laughs> and crazy, there was, by the way, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, were parts, there were parts of the race, like, you know, I'm going cross-eyed. And, but it's funny because that entire race, I never, it never dawned on me to not finish. I mean, it just got hard as hell at points. <laughs> and, but it was like, I look back at that point and it's like, those were the moments that, you know, made me really proud because, it was hard <laughs> and I, and, and I pushed yeah. through, you know, and I think that's what drives me now more is, you know, you can always have that perfect race and, and things come together and, and that's amazing, but it's also the challenges you have to work through that, that make things so, um, worth it. You know, um, you know, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs and, and when things, uh, when I can get myself out of, you know, a challenge, it's, it's a massive up for me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny. So hearing you talk, I, I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that I found triathlon because I say this to a lot of people, but triathlon changed my identity. Finding triathlon, the swim, the bike, the run, doing triathlon, racing triathlon, changed how I saw myself because I. I had you have to face the things you're afraid of. For me, open water swimming in a race is something that I not fear, but it's that's where I get nervous. And I wish like everybody could do a triathlon because <laughs> when you complete that, when I completed that, I was like, I, you know, the cliche like I can do hard things. And ever since then, I was like, I just became tougher. And I don't even know how that happened. It's just the way I saw myself that I can do all these crazy things. I can do this training. I can do this race. I can get hit in the head in a swim. I can get pushed under by like a 200 pound guy in Turkey in the Mediterranean when I raced Turkey 70.3 and pop back up and keep going. Like all of these little experiences just just made me more confident, uh, in myself and the way I do things, you know, it, and that is what triathlon has given me. Um, and I've become tougher through that. Yeah. It, you know, um, I used to work with a sports psychologist, Craig Manning, and he wrote an amazing book and I'm just reading some of his notes as you're, as you're talking and it got me thinking of this. So one of the conversations we had was based on faith um, and the faith of like, what exactly is faith in yourself? It's the belief that, you know, something that you can do is possible. And so the stronger that your faith becomes, you become more focused, right? So if you can think of faith and focus 
as a linear direction. Like, mm-hmm. if your faith in- increases, your focus is going to increase. And you need both to be able to perform well and execute well. So if you have the faith in yourself, whether it be, you know, um, I mean, that comes from an internal feeling, like you have the belief that you can do something. And I think the more and more that you do something, like go into open water or, you know, challenge yourself on, say, a 20-mile bike ride vert and then go into a 40-mile bike ride, you're going to have more faith that you can actually that something that you want to do is possible, like a marathon or a half Ironman or an, or an Ironman. And with that comes the focus that we all talk about. And when you have that, there's, there's no place for fear. There's no place for doubt. There's no place for worry. Because we become more aware of ourselves. We become aware of what our goals are, what we want. And um, when we are focused like that and our faith is strong, we actually approach a race with such like gratitude and, and, um, focus and, and, and just fun. Like it's, it's something that gives you like an enlightenment, like it's a, it's an excitement. Whereas yeah. like a lot of the times if you, if you go into a race and you don't really have that faith in yourself or you, or the focus, you're kind of living in this mediocre way of life almost because you get distracted by what other people think or the concern of others or where they're going to be or the approval of ours of of say like your triathlon club like if you're comparing yourself to each other's so really it comes down to what you want inside and you know I've worked a lot on this in terms of having faith in myself and you know it comes not only just in sport but sport's been kind of like my driving force in terms of finding faith in myself in all other sports um in all other aspects of my life in relationships in in um you know the work that I do on the side as a coach and 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 it's just it just comes with with practice you know and i i i think um you know, your attitude of never quitting, that's like a faith in yourself that you have it in you that it's possible to finish. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's what you And gotta, also, so, mm-hmm. and you were talking about like, you know, faith and focus and practicing. And before earlier, you were talking about this reminded me when you were talking about, you have things you say to yourself when you swim and bike and run things to focus on. Um, you know, one of the things that I mentioned earlier that I have trouble with is the mental toughness before a race. You know, that the week leading mm-hmm. up to it, I, I'm very anxious. Um, I have to remind myself, control the controllables. Like, there's just a lot of monkey chatter in my head that is just part of my personality. <laughs> Once the gun goes off, I'm fine. But um, I... I found this book that helps me. It's called 10 Minutes to Mental Toughness. Mm. I think it's by Jason Selk. And I use it a lot in the weeks leading up to a race um, where, I don't know if you've heard of it, he's got like this five things that you do and um, you you take a centering breath to like calm your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And then you have your performance statements. And this is what I was thinking about with you. Like you have, for us, it would be like, swim like I think um my performance statement for the swim is like long strong smooth relaxed and I repeat to that to myself you know things like that and you have one for the bike so you go through your performance statement and this is like he has his athletes which he works with all sorts of athletes do this before big practices like a big training session you do that and then you go through and I love this because I you probably do this too is you go through your um your personal highlight reel where you sit and you think about a performance you were really proud of and you kind of go through that day, how you felt, and you think about all that. And then you also think about the future, the performance you want to have, and you visualize the course. You visualize yourself eating and drinking and crossing the finish line and all of that. You kind of go through that. Or maybe just the swim, if that's what you're worried about. So you do all this visualization, and then you do your identity statement which is like who you are as an athlete. Like I am the most prepared triathlete on this start line, right? Or I am the most mentally tough triathlete here. I am the fastest runner in this race. Just something that gives you whatever you're thinking about. And then you do your centering breath. 
again. And so you go through these five things, you know, you can do it before a big bike ride, you know, or a big training day. But, um, and I do this leading up to the race. So when you get there, you have in the, the morning of the race, you get there and you have all these tools and you've thought about all of this. And, um, that has really, really helped me. And I come back to that a lot. Um, and it's a great, it's a real little book called 10 minutes to mental toughness. And I highly recommend it. I've given it to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that has helped me, but that has a lot of what you're talking about. When you were talking about that, that brought me to a book that I really like. It's called the fearless mind by, by Craig Manning. Um, mm-hmm. he's the guy that I was talking about. Um, but I kind of work on it every day and Mm -hmm. it's basically you know I go into a workout kind of having a goal of the workout um and then I do the workout and within the context of the workout I maybe have three like two or three things I want to focus on so so today swim today I wanted to focus on a long drive with my right arm because I know it's it's weak um a two-beat kick um and my breath control so let's just say that I worked on that so I would only pick three things so then at the end of the workout, you know, I, I'm i done. And I, I kind of do like a mental checklist, like three things I did well. So, you know, I'm giving myself kudos on what I did. One, I finished a really long workout today. <laughs> um, <laughs> two, I stayed focused on the long drive of my right arm. Uh, three, I fueled well, okay? So then within that context as well, I look at, okay, so so what's one thing I can improve on? Because I used to swim with this guy, and this kind of backstory story, but I used to swim swim with this guy, and we would swim, say, hundreds and stuff. And so let's say he just wasn't having a good swim. He would just completely go off the rails because he was just like, oh, it's just a crappy, crappy workout, da 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 And I'm, like, trying to be upbeat, like, hey, let's just try again, (laughs) you know? Um... (laughs) But, uh, so the last part of all of this is one thing you can improve on, because if you're going to f- focus on all this negative, it's just going to constantly be in the back of your mind. Yeah. So you work, yeah. so you focus on the three to one. So three things you did well and one thing to improve on. So for me, for example, one thing to improve on for me is probably, let's say, let's see, um, the back end of my left hand, because I'm pretty weak at that part. So I take that one thing and I take it to the next workout. Okay, so this is my next focus point. So it's a constant focus and rechecking, but it's not three negatives because you're because you're not going to be able to fix anything that way. Um, And I and I'm not looking at the achievements that I've done if I'm looking at all these negative attributes that come to that workout. So when I go to a race, it's kind of the same thing. I I go in there with kind of a very task oriented approach, things that I can control, um, and it's 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 those are kind of like the concrete stuff. And then other than that, mm-hmm. it's just like you know what? Let's just see what happens. Let's see what I got. Let's enjoy the day. Let's 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 just open it up to the yeah. possibility. You know? Um, well, it's yeah. it's funny because like I once I start racing, I'm like. I love the day. Mm -hmm. Like, I love racing. I'm smiling the whole time. We've talked about this before. I never go negative. I'm just like, whatever. (laughs) Um, And But this highlights the difference between our personalities where you're like, let's just do it, you know? And then I was thinking about our friend, Jen Seen, when we were both racing Mm -hmm. Maine. (laughs) And I had texted her. And I was like, oh, are you going to drive the course? Because I am so, I'm such a planner. I need to know. And she was like, no, I'm just going to see the course when I go ride it. And I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Because I love to preview the course. And it's just so funny too, how our personalities, while we have many similarities, your personalities come out in the way you like train and race and the way you approach things, which you have to give yourself you know, leeway for and know what makes you comfortable and what makes you, you know, what's going to make you more comfortable and more confident leading into yeah, race day this, without losing your marbles. This actually <laughs> reminds me of a really funny story. So I, um, I, I broke my foot a few years ago and it took a long time to heal. So I didn't race for quite some time. So I jumped into this local Olympic race. Like I mean, it was super local. There was no big deal or whatever. And my boyfriend and I drove up and um, I realized I didn't have like a triathlon backpack. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh yeah. Like, I and I it, it just threw me off the rails because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna carry all my stuff. Da, 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 da. And I was like <laughs> so stressed. Like it was insane stress for nothing. Like I could have put it in a plastic bag <laughs> for all things. So he had to go to REI and buy me a backpack. <laughs> but, it, but it changed the perspective of everything. I finally had like the secure backpack to put all my yep. stuff in. But like looking back, it was the most stupidest thing that I was like trying to get some control over because I was so freaked out because I, w- I haven't raced for so long. and But I was also yeah. thinking about like, you know, uh, the outcome of the race. I was thinking, you know, uh, what people would think of me and da, 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 da. So like all those like chitter chatter stuff. And it and so like it came out as like, oh my gosh, I don't have a backpack. <laughs> You know, and so like stupid. knowing you now, you would be like, "Oh, I'll just grab this pillowcase and just throw oh, totally. everything in." <laughs> that would be that would be like Angela, twenty twenty two. She would be like, "You know what? It'll be fine." That's yeah. always you're always like, "It'll be fine." <laughs> but you know what? You bring up a really good point because as mentally tough as all triathletes are, because even to to train and to make it to the start line, we all have grit. There are definitely moments where you do like lose your collective shit. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. because I was thinking about the one of the days, it was my last long training day before Ironman Arizona, and we had had a massive nor'easter. It was November, the, the day before. It was like wind, there were tree limbs down, people lost power, and I had to do a long swim. I had to do a 100-mile bike and a run off the bike. It was like, mm. this was my last big day. In my head, I was like, this is going to make or break my race. (laughs) You know, not the hours before that I had trained. And I had gotten the swim in and I couldn't ride outside or I thought I couldn't because it really was very, very bad out. The roads were, it was debris everywhere. And I got on the trainer and I was a half hour into it and the power went out. And I am having, I am losing my mind. So I get on my gravel bike. I'm texting my husband like, you need to get the mini generator. I get on my gravel bike. I go out. It is awful out. There's like debris down, tree limbs blocking the bike path. So I get, and then I come, my husband texts me an hour into the ride. I got power to your trainer. So I come back. I get on the trainer. It's not working right. I get like four hours on the trainer, which, and the whole time I am in like the darkest place. I am just like, not wanting to quit because I'm not quitting. I am going to get this ride. And I was like, at one point I was like crying (laughs) and I was like, I'm going to get this done. And I remember it took me because of all the changes and the issues. I didn't get to that run until like five o'clock at night. (laughs) And I had started swimming at like seven 30. I don't even know. And I was just like, that that doesn't kill you will make me stronger. But I that was a day that I will remember because I mean, I didn't go negative like for me or the sport, but I really was like, I think that's when my stubbornness and my determination, like I just like lost it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was almost to a detriment. I know they say like, oh, your hard workouts like help you in race day. That one just kind of undid (laughs) me, you know? And so sometimes you have to go to that place to be like, to like I like later I was like what was that like that was not gonna make or break your race and I could have done it like two days later mm-hmm. but I was so hell bent you know we try athletes are, I was so hell bent on doing it that it was just like oh my gosh and so you know I wonder if that's a case of that's mental toughness gone wrong <laughs> <laughs> I've had days like that like where you know all the all the uh computer stuff goes wrong or things aren't clicking in and not working i mean it's just a matter of fluster but i think it's just a matter of thing like again something that you that was out of your control and you're trying to control it and um i i I mean i've had times where i was supposed to do a really long ride and i mean uh my computer wouldn't connect with my with my trainer and i just was like you know what i'm done (laughs) i just needed a reset (laughs) because i was so frustrated um but I mean, I guess that that brings me on on another point, which maybe people are gonna scoff at. But you know, 
as a female, the cycles we go through play a huge role in my mental state. <laughs> like, oh my god, I yes. can't handle stuff like uh, pre pre menstrual sometimes, and that's yeah. okay. I have one or two days where I'm completely tired. I'm sad. I'm you know little things like like the trainer. I just can't handle and. You know, sometimes you just have to let yourself relax and chill out and go about it the next day. I mean, obviously you can't do it for the race, but a race is different. You're tapering, you, 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 you know, you're preparing for all this kind of stuff. But when you're going through the day in and day out of training and, and stuff like this happens and you're going through a hormone cycle, it's like, just give yourself a break, yeah. you know, you know. We're female. Yep. <laughs> the worst. I always look at the calendar and see how that lines yeah. up with my races <laughs> to see where, where I'm going to be in the taper and on race day. <laughs> yeah. Because it totally, absolutely, I know. What advice would you give to somebody, you know, who struggles with mental toughness either day to day or on race day? You know, if you could like pare it down to something, even like pretend like you're saying something to your athlete who's having, who's really struggling or it's race week, what are you going to say? I think the one big thing I, I would kind of put it on themselves. Like, why are you racing? Like, you have to have Mm -hmm. a why. And, you know, that can open up so many different things for people. Some people, um... You know, they want to do it because they want to be healthy or they want to see, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of things. Like, I I think about my next race that I want to do, and I want to do it because it'll be a jump start to my season, see where I'm at. Um, I want to have some fun because I've been training for a while. And so focusing on that why gives that person a, a perspective of trying to get out of, like, the anxiety of actually the race itself or the next day. Um, and then... I know gratitude has been talked a lot about it, but it's, mm-hmm. it's gratitude of your health. Like, like mm-hmm. here you are, you get a chance to do something that not a lot of people get to do for one, because they haven't trained at all. Um, and maybe their health's not there. Or they don't have the ability to, and you know, it's just like, see what you got. Like, that's what this is all about. It's supposed to be fun. Like, well, like no matter what the outcome is, one of the reasons I do triathlon is because it's fun. So if I have that in my head, I mean, it changes perspective quickly. Like, this is for fun. Like, th- like I choose to be here. So, you know, put put a smile on my face because th- this is, like, fun. <laughs> um, and that usually works. So, I don't know. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's two things. Um, as we were talking throughout this whole thing, I was thinking about, you know, when I think about mental toughness and grit, it's not just in a race. It's kind of like what I was just talking about, like finishing your workouts and making sure you're mentally tough when you're training and you're determined and focused. But on the flip side, and this might go against the whole podcast, I've learned a lot from you just being near you lately because oftentimes, like you said, there are days where you will push a workout because you're not feeling up for it or you've run out of time, or something's come up, or, and to me, that having that flexibility Mm -hmm. along with the mental toughness, I'm like, my, I was like, oh my God, well, I can move that around. I don't have to do that. Yeah, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, especially now that, you know, a lot of training is based on, say, a platform that's online, and we see these green boxes or red boxes, and you know, if you have a good coach or someone that you can talk to or you're working with a coach, I mean, that's why they're there. You talk to them if you need some stuff. But then, like, this brings it back to the very full full, full story of you sitting at the Y parking lot. You know, like, sometimes I get yeah. there and I just need I just need a moment, you know? <laughs> like, I need, yeah. I need the energy to get into the pool. And so I take that extra five or ten minutes and, you know, maybe listen to a few songs on the radio or, you know, or – read a little or you know look at something or text friends or or what have you but something that just kind of helps me get into the mood that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go swim yeah yeah and I when I think about mental toughness you know if we're gonna sum it up if I'm gonna you know come to the end of this I think about you know you've got a lot of parts we've talked about all these things we've talked about you know commitment 
We've talked about confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. We've talked about liking the challenge of not just the race, but the training, you know, controlling it. I always say you can control three things. You know, you can control your effort. You can control your attitude and your focus. And all of that comes into it. And so if you think about that all coming into the mental toughness and finding that, finding all of those things, and also like giving yourself a little grace on the days where you don't have it, because just like Mm -hmm. training is cumulative, so is mental toughness. Mm -hmm. It's all about (laughs) the grit and the grace. Grit and grace. (laughs) Grit and grace. You got it. Well, awesome. awesome. This has been fantastic. I hope everybody got something out of this. Uh, please send us an email. I race like a girl at gmail.com. Um, and thanks for joining us. See you later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. And we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.